Simon says subscribe and click on the bell icon to receive notifications. Continuing on with our discussion on selection, we're going to move on down to this set of icons right here. Where we're going to be working today, right now with this lesson, on the quick selection tool and the magic wand tool in one lesson here. So the magic wand tool is all about color sampling and selecting based off of that sample of colors that are similar in range to that color. So for example, I have this kind of gray color of the sky. Let me go ahead and choose the magic wand. And I have this kind of like grayish white color of the sky. And it's more or less kind of uniform, which was really helpful for when I'm working with the sample of the color. Now, if I had like a blue sky that was kind of going darker to blue, then I might have to do a little bit more, but at least they're still within that same range. But ultimately, this is the type of selection tool that's gonna select similar colors based off of what you sampled. So I'm just going to go ahead and click once, and I want you to notice how good it is. Just one click, it did the entire sky, because it's all pretty much this kind of like grayish color there, okay? More or less grayish white. Now, I'm going to go ahead and deselect and zoom in a little bit so you can see what our parameters are around this, something called tolerance. So it's our tolerance that's going to allow Photoshop to know what, how far and wide the range of colors are going to be. Okay, so for an example, let me go ahead and I'm going to choose this doggy in the window. Okay, great. Now, let me go ahead, we're going to do this exercise in a future lesson, but let me go ahead and just choose right now, I'm going to choose this background layer, unlock it, and then I'm just going to go ahead and click. And just notice that it kind of just went to that part and that part, right? Because there's a lot of variance here. So the tolerance is at this level. But if I increase the tolerance, notice how I'm going to get even more. See that? It's like, oh, you want red and all of its brothers and cousins, everything related to that red, you bring it up to 82. Right? Let me go ahead and just deselect. Bring it down. You're going to get very, very little of what you want. Okay, so don't give me too much. 32 is going to be your default, and it kind of does something around there. Okay, so keep that in mind, and we can try it again for this house. I'm going to zoom in a little bit, and let's just say I want to just kind of grab the door. You see that it's all kind of relatively uniform in terms of the brown. I'm going to deselect. Let's go ahead and bring that down a little bit. It's going to be a very specific kind of brown, and it does less of that. Okay, so just keep that in mind. That's how the Magic Wand tool works. Okay, now let's go over here to, I'm going to zoom out once again. I'm going to go ahead and just do Control or Command Zero. All right, and then this time I'm going to use the quick selection tool. I'm going to do, I'm going to use the quick selection tool to select the house in this case. All right, and this is very good for objects, and especially when the objects have kind of a contrast between their background and foreground. Okay, so you're going to see that it works pretty well, but mo many times you really just want to be patient with it. Don't force it and let Photoshop do its thing. So I'm just going to simply click and drag, and it's going to find the edges for me to be able to select what I want to select. So I'm just going to go ahead and click and drag, and then notice how it just kind of jumps to the edges. See that? It kind of finds that contrast. It understands that there is a white background there right next to our brown roof. So you can see what I'm doing here, right? So really, really nice. And in a little bit, we're going to learn how to get rid of some of the ones where we have too much selection. So don't worry about it if you get too much. And just take your time trusting the system. Okay, just let Photoshop do its thing. Just kind of bouncing over there. It goes right to the edge. It's something pretty magical. Pretty great. And by the way, you can probably guess what I'm going to say next is zooming in is really, really important. Because the more you zoom in, the more precision you can get as well. Okay. Oh, and by the way, notice what I'm doing right now. This is another really good shortcut key. Notice how I'm moving around the image right now. I'm holding down the space bar on my keyboard to do that. Okay, the space bar, this is known as panning across the image. Okay, and the space bar allows me to have temporary access to this little hand that can allow me to pan through, but then it takes me right back to the tool that I was just at. Okay? So very good. So it did an okay job. 
and it's really nice. It didn't touch the sky. Got a little bit too much over here. I just wanted the house, and we're going to learn about that in a little bit, what we can do. All right, so just keep that in mind, what, what both of those tools can do for us in terms of selection. All right, now we are going to talk about what we can do in terms of removing selections and also what we can do in terms of other types of tools like our lasso tools in just a little bit. But we're going to stay with this topic right now briefly so I can show you about removing a selection when you've got too much or adding on a selection when you don't have enough. Okay, and this is again, this conversation is going to be good in all contexts of your selection. So when you want to take away from a selection, you use the Alt or Option key to do that. Okay, if you want to add to it, it's going to be the Shift key. Okay, so you can see very easily you can use both of those. Now, keep your eye on my little mouse right here. Do you see that? How I have a little plus sign in there? Watch what happens now when I hold down the Option key or the Alt key, and you can see how I can just kind of give it a little bit of a nudge and say, you know what, I didn't need all that. Thank you, you're very generous, Photoshop, but no thanks. And see, very slowly, very carefully, I'm just nudging that up there. Okay, see? Saying, no thanks, don't need that. Okay, doing the same thing, holding down the space bar. I'm just going to nudge that. And again, zooming would be really helpful here. You can see, great. And then here, wow, did a really, really nice job. And again, if I was zooming in, that would be even better. Okay, and now did a pretty good job there. And if I wanted to add to the selection, right, if I hold down the shift key, I can just go ahead and just blast that out right there. Notice there's the plus sign. Sometimes you don't have to hold down the shift key because that is the default. If you take a look up here, this is showing me, in fact, that that's the plus sign that's there already. Okay, so I'll go ahead and undo, keep my selection there. Okay, now in a little bit, we're going to see what these selection techniques can do when we start building these things out because we're going to do a full project on these where we're going to separate out the sky. We're even going to make the sky a little bit prettier. We can be able to do all kinds of crazy things to this. Okay, but our selection techniques are going to be very important for working with these. All right, so I'm going to keep this as is for right now, but I am going to pause the video and then I want you to practice this and we'll come back in the next lesson. If you're not a subscriber, click down below to subscribe so you get notified about similar videos we upload. To see the full course that this video came from, click over there. And click over there to see more videos from Simon Says It.